Hello, everyone. Good day. Hi there. Hello. Very nice. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Adam. So, what are all these getting practical with digital media videos all about, anyway? Well, I'm glad you asked. And before I answer that, let me put my hand down from this awkward position and turn towards you. Probably the best way to explain what these videos are for is to first explain what they're not for. As I've been saying elsewhere, it's not the role of teaching staff to teach you how to use the various media forms and platforms that we'll be engaging with in this unit, but to facilitate your learning about their use. We don't know what kind of longevity certain social media platforms will have. In a couple of years' time, some of the things we're using may not be as dominant as they are now and as necessary to use, or they might have been made completely redundant by something new that's come along. We just don't know. What we do know is what you need to be able to do to future-proof your present or your future careers. You don't need to learn from us how to use specific media. You need to learn how to learn how to use them. With very few exceptions, I'm not going to use these videos to tell you how to log in or where to click and what to do specifically to make something work in a certain program. That's not my role, and it doesn't need to be because in the vast majority of cases, you already know how to do it. Contemporary digital media culture has become so accessible and so user friendly that you pretty much can just pick it up as you go. You go by your intuition, and there's a real emphasis on the need to explore and to play, and that's very relevant to this unit. And just to highlight this, I want to show you a few minutes of a video that I made a couple of years ago. This little extract is easily the most used footage of all of my collection that I've used over the years. I bring it out at presentations to undergraduate students, to postgraduates, to academics, to anyone who's thinking of developing their online persona more. And really, it just puts a really simple point in a really clear way. And it's all thanks to Tiffany. You have a wealth of user-friendly and intuitive applications available to you, often directly accessible from your smartphone. And the answer to almost every question can be found via a quick Google search or a YouTube demo video. One of Tiffany's daily rituals serves as a perfect illustration of this issue. Think about how you learnt how to use Facebook. Did someone show you? Did you read a book about it? No. You learnt by observing what other people were doing, by experimenting with what you had available, and just as importantly, as Tiffany is showing here, by repetition. And if you were having trouble with something, you probably googled the answer or asked someone on Facebook. Keep Tiffany's lesson here in mind as you work through the unit. The answer is quite literally at your fingertips. And to give an example of this, before today I have never before used the slideshow and video making website Powtoon, which you're seeing a product of right now. All I did was log on, I went through a basic maybe 10 second tutorial which didn't teach me all that much, and I just taught myself how to use it over a couple of hours. Sometimes it's hard to get your head around the nuts and bolts of things. Sometimes things aren't as intuitive as they might be. That's part of the learning process. But you'll find that just by a bit of trial and error, by playing around and exploring, by looking up some YouTube demo videos for pretty much anything that's out there, you find your way and you learn how to learn how to use things very quickly and very effectively. This week we've asked you to construct some online profiles on LinkedIn and about me. I don't need to tell you how to do this. We all learn together by being active and by being engaged. I've seen some students do amazing things when they work together and, and my happiest moments in a seminar is when I actually see students sharing information about Twitter or about me saying this is how I did this and it's really, really gratifying to see that. That is how things are supposed to work. That is how we learn. I won't talk about LinkedIn here, but I will spend a few minutes reflecting on about me because for the vast majority of students, you'll probably never have heard of this website before. I'm not saying it's of the same scale and importance as something like LinkedIn, a highly professional network which people build their entire careers around. But I've been using About Me for teaching for several years now, because when I found it, it just seemed to be a perfect kind of site to experiment, to play with how you negotiate your online identity. The issue of how you depict yourself online really comes to the forefront when you're limited by the conventions of a site to the extent that About Me does. It doesn't let you do many things, but that's actually really useful for paring things down and for thinking, okay, what am I saying about myself? It's also a really useful time for me to be discussing about me in this context, because it's changed fundamentally only in the last couple of months. When I first started using about me, this is what it looked like. 
you could do a little bit more than you can now. It enabled you to have a background image which was separate to your profile picture. If you've already created your About Me profile, you can see by contrasting it with this old one of mine that the main information is still there. There are a couple of things missing in the new version though. This sort of underlines what I'm talking about in this video. I can't teach you how to use About Me because it may well change by the time you watch the video. But when you have a look at About Me, you'll see that you really don't need me to show you how to use it. Over the years when I've got students onto About Me, there's been a lot of confusion about what's it all for? And of course, with any site, you should observe first what people are doing with it. And what I've seen in the past when I get students to introduce themselves to each other online by sharing their About Me profiles is a lot of looking at other people's profiles before you create your own. And that's more than fine. That's subconsciously how we use these kinds of sites. But you want to ask yourself, what is this site for? How are people using it? One of the great benefits that About Me has, and the latest upgrade has really underlined this more than anything else, is that it's a really useful, clear and concise hub for all of your online activity. You can connect your various accounts for it. Now with the latest version, you can spotlight one of your activities and draw people's attention to what you think one of your greatest strengths is. It's a really good way of getting you thinking about the cross-pollination of sites and how you want to have things connected when they should be connected to have a more developed, coherent, searchable and really powerful online identity. The accessibility of this site and its user friendliness really allows us within 10, maybe 20 minutes to think about how we portray ourselves. How would you describe yourself in your short bio? You don't want to use too many words because no one wants to read many words, especially on this kind of site. What is the key information that you think people need to know about you? What kind of persona do you want to create? And a really key part of this performance is deciding what image you will use. What do you want this picture to say about you? The best thing you can do after you create an About Me profile is ask for advice. You could even do this before you create it. But when you ask someone, what do you think I should say about myself in a very short bio, you might get very different things that you might not have even thought of yourself. And to further highlight the real importance of asking for people's advice, I remember the very first year that I was using About Me in my seminars. I had my profile up on the screen and one of the students wisely asked me, why are you using the third person when you talk about yourself in your bio? And I hadn't even really realized that I was doing it. It really didn't fit to use the third person. So I changed it right there and then. And that was because a student pointed it out to the teacher. It might sound like a cliche, but we do learn as much from you, if not more than you can learn from us. So this kind of online making and collaboration with digital media is what this unit really hopes to capture. And I really look forward to seeing how you go with it. Good luck with your exploration. Have fun. And above all, remember Tiffany's lesson. Observe, do, repeat, and play. Where is everybody? Aww.